I wanted to share seven ideas that will, will make your live events better. You know, one of the things that I, I have one-on-one -on -one calls with people every week and, and a, a lot of my one-on-one -on -one calls are around live events um, because Brian and Luke do such a good job on the tech side. I don't really have to answer that many technical questions and stuff anymore. So a lot of times it's more around ideas and I did this event, it didn't work as good as it could have, or I'm doing an event, what should I do to make it awesome? And so these are really seven things that I've noticed a pattern that I'm sharing with people over and over, just like small tips that will make your event better. Um, and so just wanna, just kind of wanna run through them real quick. So number one is to, um, is to have music playing before and after the event, right? So um, you wanna have music playing and that way um, when people come in, it's gonna, keep, it's gonna have a higher energy level than if they come into a dead room, if they come into a silent room, it, completely changes the energy level. Um, you know, it's like they're more upbeat, you know, they're gonna like your music can determine their energy, right? So you wanna like for me, I look for like almost like a now that's what I call hits or like a workout mix where it's gonna be like um, popular songs, but they're sped up or they're DJ remixes so that they have faster um, beats per minute. And uh, so that's usually what I'm looking for, right? Is something that's a kind of fast music, current music where people are gonna know the songs or it's, you know, the best, the best rock songs of the 70s or whatever, right? Something along those lines where it's gonna be like cool music and it doesn't have to be blaringly loud, but you do want it to be louder than maybe you think it should be. The reason for that is when people are having private conversation, it allows for people to have private conversations. So when people are in the room, as they're coming in, as you're meeting people, people that are having conversations, everybody's not overhearing the other conversations because the music creates a background noise. So the only conversation you can pay attention to is the one that's right, is the one that's right in front of you. Um, so having the music before will, will help with that as well. Um, having the music playing after the event, you know, is uh, again, it just helps to keep, take the energy level back up at the end of the event. And really doing those things is something that I learned from going to networking marketing events. You know, you'll notice that they always do that. They always have music kind of pumping in the beginning, right? Get people like hyped up and energetic. And then in the end, they always turn music on right at the end. And the reason they would do that at network marketing events is because as conversations are happening about people saying, this is a scam or I'm interested in joining or th these things, those conversations are only being had within the people here, right? So everybody all around the room can be having conversations and that loud music, it drowns out all the other conversations. So it doesn't matter, you're not, if you're talking about, if I'm me and Lewis are here talking about, I'm interested in joining, I don't hear the guy over here talking about, I think it's a scam, you know, this isn't for me, where I'm like, oh wait, maybe this is a scam, you know? It, it allows only one conversation to be had at a time. So again, you don't, at the end, you don't have to have the music blaringly loud like a nightclub or something, but you just wanna have it up so that it gets the music, it gets the energy again up and going, people get like happy and motivated and, it allows for private conversations to occur um, at the end. Uh, the second thing is to make sure you're doing some sort of giveaways, okay? Now, your giveaways, you can do the giveaways. If you're bringing um, two different referral partners in the mix, so for example, if you're having a title person, you're, they're helping you do the event or an attorney where you're doing it at their office, and then if you're bringing in your insurance agent or a home inspector or somebody else that's helping you promote the event, then that could be their contribution is, I need you to go get five $2 scratch off tickets that we're going to give away during the event. Right. Or I need you to have some sort of, some sort of giveaway. I just like to use lottery tickets. Okay. If you give away $1 scratch offs or $2 scratch offs, almost inevitably somebody in the room, if you give at least four or five tickets, somebody's going to win. Right. And now when you win, when somebody wins, it's like, Oh yeah, see people are already making more money from coming to this training. This is awesome. You know, and you make a big deal out of it and it's just, it's really fun. Right. Um, you can also get people to, um, you can also use the lottery tickets during the rapid fire question. So every class that I teach or that we've created for the Legion, they all have a rapid fire question built into it. And it's designed to get audience participation right off the, you know, right off the bat. And so if you want, say, whoever has the highest number of this, you know, during this, you know, round is going to get another scratch off or Whoever has the craziest story during the rapid fire is going to get another lottery ticket, right? And you get people wanting to share maybe a little more than they would because you'd be amazed. People will just want to win. It doesn't even matter what the prize is. Like people just want to win. And so that's why the $1 scratch offs, they're really, um, they're really good for this role because you don't have to put a lot of money into it. 
and it's something that's just fun. And especially if you make a big deal out of a winner, right? Like take a picture with the winner, get up, have them hold up their ticket, right? Everybody wins when they come to my events, you know, this kind of stuff, right? It's like, you just gotta, you just gotta turn it into, a, into fun. Um, number three is get lots of audience participation and even force it if it's necessary. And one way to do this is to know people's names, right? So when you're in the front of the room, you can call out specific people. Hey, Lewis, what do you think about that? What do you think about that, Walter? You know, Victor, do you ask a lot of questions when you do a class, you know, when you host classes, right? Like that. So the, and I, see, I saw even Victor was ready to answer, Lewis, see Walter, these guys were all ready to give answers because that's just what you do, right? Somebody asks you, asks you a question. If I ask you a question and I literally just stay here and I do a, at least a four second pause, it's gonna get so awkward that you're gonna answer the question. Feel how awkward that is? That was about four seconds, right? It, it's like, even to the point, I saw some people in here where they're like, oh, let me, let me fill in this gap, you know? Um, and so just keep that in mind, right? People have to answer. If you, if you ask them a question and, and give at least a four second pause, the human brain is, is designed to fill that gap. And typically that's just with talking. Um, you want to, like I said, hopefully you don't have to force the conversation, but that's the way you do it is you do it in a really soft way. You say like, right, Lewis? What do you think about that, Lewis? You know, you just make people have to give an answer. And um, creating more audience participation, the more you can create, the better your class is going to be, right? So always, I'm always looking for opportunities to say like, how's that work for you? Like, who has a crazy story about that? You know, what do you guys think about that? And just get their feedback, right? It's going to create different conversations. It's also going to give me an opportunity to demonstrate more expertise by helping answer to those questions. All right. Number four is you want to make them laugh. All right. People, when you laugh with somebody, it creates a bond and um, it elevates that, that connection with that relationship when you, when you um, can laugh with somebody. All right. So look for those opportunities, whether you're, you're use, you know, if you're being self deprecating and you're kind of laughing at yourself and making a joke about yourself, or if you're just telling a joke or just look for opportunities to make people laugh right? To point out something funny. If you have referral partners in the room, sometimes I'll try to use them, right? I'll try to make a joke about my referral partner because number one, it's going to, it makes people laugh. Number two, it's going to show people that we have a, we have such a tight relationship that I can make jokes about him, you know? Um, and and it's, it's not like he's offended. He's laughing with me, like, because we're buddies, right? People want to be friends with people like that. So if you can make people laugh, always, you know, take that opportunity. If somebody laughs in the room, try to laugh with them, right? It doesn't mean you have to, don't fake laugh, but don't pass it. Sometimes I see that with people where somebody will be laughing and you're just like sitting there letting them laugh. Try to laugh with them, like have a moment, you know? And people like, like do that. It's like, you're, people remember that, you know? People remember that. All right. Number five is ask them to create a post at the end of the class. So again, we build this into all of our classes in the Legion. But we build in an opportunity to ask people, hey, who here has got an awesome value? Raise your hand if you've got a ton of value out of this class today, right? They're all going to raise their hand. Here's what I need you to do. Will you, I need you to do me a huge favor, okay? Pull out your phone right now, and I want you to take a picture, right? You can take a selfie, take a picture up, to your, up here at the front of the room, whatever you want to do. And I want you to take a picture and post it online and, and tag me on the post. Let people know that when Lewis hosts a class, they need to come to the class because it's awesome. Everybody gets a ton of value out of it. And we just want to make your, you know, we want to make your other realtor friends, we want to make them jealous that they didn't come today. They probably missed out on this awesome information. And what that's going to do is, you know, by n very few people will make a post like that if you don't ask, but people will make it if you ask, not everybody. So don't have this expectation like 20, 20 out of 20 are going to make a post, but maybe five or seven will make a post. And that's huge when you can get five or seven people realtors telling other realtors like you guys missed out man because when nick hosts a class it's awesome it's a ton of awesome content you know and now they're going to start getting you in the dms they're going to start sending you friend requests asking you when's your next class right it's going to create opportunity for you because you create that fear of missing out by having you know basically the people that came tell other people that should have come that they missed it we do some a lot of you know we try to find opportunities for these same things during the conclave right how we did the selfie session and some of these different opportunities you know we want to show people what they're missing out if they're not, if they're not in, the, you know, in the room. But also along those same lines real quick is like sort of a sub thing is don't talk about the people that aren't in the room, right? If, if you're hosting an event and you were expecting 20 people and five people showed up, 
give your all to those five people and be super grateful that those five came. Don't talk about the fact that we were expecting 20 people, 15 people didn't, I can't believe 15 people RSVP and they just didn't even show up, right? You start making people feel bad that are in the room. They're like, damn, maybe I shouldn't have came to this either, you know? Whereas you could elevate those people and make them super special. Like, man, you guys are freaking smart that you came here. Actually, you know what? Since there's only five of us here, I'm actually gonna show you guys one of my live ads. I'm gonna show you guys some secret shit that I wasn't planning on showing because I didn't wanna give it to 20 people. But I'm gonna show you guys this because, because there's only five of you here and I think I wanna honor you, the fact that you showed up, All right? All right. Okay, number six, make sure you stick around afterwards. It goes along with the music playing, but after the class is over, the people that are interested in what you're talking about, they're gonna come up to you and wanna to talk to you. They're gonna to wanna to come up and they're gonna to wanna to either talk to you about partnering or wanna, how can we have a meeting? Can we go out and have some lunch? They're gonna to wanna to have a chat with you, right? So you don't have to be awkward. You can still you know, pack your things and stuff, but just on your schedule, plan out that, you know, if you're doing a class from 10 to 11, you're gonna to need to stay at least there till 11.30 at the, at the late, at the earliest, right? Because people are gonna to wanna to have conversations with you and look, that's, what the, that's the whole point of doing it, right? Is, you're doing a class to create conversations. So make sure you stick around and give yourself a fair chance to have those. If you just rush out right afterwards, you're gonna leave people that wanted to talk to you and they didn't get a chance, you know? And so just, you know, um, make sure you book time in your calendar so that you can stick around and, and be able to just be available to chat with people. All right, and last one, number seven, is actually follow up, right? At the end of the day, follow up ultimately is gonna determine so much of your success in the Legion with, with Facebook ads, with your database, and definitely with doing live events, right? So you have to actually follow up with the realtors that are coming to your events. Doesn't mean you have to follow up with everybody because you might not like everybody that came. You know, there's always maybe some jerk that hang out in the back and you don't have to follow up with him. But make sure that there's people you want to work with that you actually follow up with them and send them a handwritten note card. Tell them that you felt lucky that they were at your class. You know, you could throw another lottery ticket in there if you wanted to. Uh, invite them, you know, get, call them afterwards and invite them to come to your office. I actually have a plan, put that plan in place so you can convert those live events into referral partners. Uh, the other thing is when you get one-on-one, -on -one, a lot of times is when you can get them to, they, they'll start asking you about coming to their broker's office or meeting their broker, doing private classes for their office and their teams and, and this kind of stuff. So it's also when you're going to get uh, more opportunities will definitely present themselves as you're getting one-on-one -on -one with folks. So uh, just wanted to share those those seven tips. Anybody have any feedback or questions or anything about uh, those those seven ideas around live events?